Are you ready for some Jersey? Well, we've got Jersey. The zipper was made here. The light bulb was made here. The color television calls the Garden State home. Everybody wants to know about New Jersey. Sandy beaches, beautiful cities. We even have the Jersey Turnpike. Inventors, music, the movies. You need an exit? We got them too. You want Jersey? This is Jersey. Welcome back to This Is Jersey. I have Don J. Smith here, arts consultant, here to talk about the different arts events he has going on throughout New Jersey. Don, thank you for being here. Well, Gary, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, you do a lot of events throughout New Jersey. Tell me what you're doing at New Jersey City University. Well, we do uh, several things for New Jersey City University, but the big one is the NJCU Presidential Speaker Series. This past season, we celebrated New Jersey's 350th anniversary. We had the great Pulitzer Prize winning historian Doris Kearns Goodwin, the physicist Michio Kaku, and then we had Bonnie St. John, who was a remarkable Olympic athlete, as you remember. Why is having great New Jerseyans at a speaker series? Why is that important? Well, it's important at NJCU because so many students at universities throughout this country have the opportunity to hear great speakers in person. But NJCU being a school that caters to uh, a population of students that uh, is on primarily on tuition or scholarship, uh, more than half of them are the first in their families to go to college. The school has really focused on the classroom experience and training kids to get jobs after college. But we, by bringing the NJCU Speaker Series to NJCU's campus, we're giving these students the richness that so many other college students have. And it's open to the public. It's been a great experience. And this coming season, we're planning our season now to focus on the entrepreneurial spirit. We'll have speakers in October, December, and then in March. Uh, we haven't announced the speakers yet, but people can look on the NJCU website at njcu.edu and discover who the next series of speakers will be. It's going to be a great program. Now we're recording here in Morristown. I know you have a big festival that you do here. Tell me about that. We do. My wife Linda Smith and I worked together for many years producing concerts and special events. And here in Morristown, five years ago, we launched the Morristown Jazz and Blues Festival. And it is a festival that brings great jazz and blues musicians to the center of Morristown, middle of August. Uh, in a celebration of great American music. And it's a celebration of Frank Sinatra, Les Paul, and Muddy Waters, all of whom are celebrating their 100th birthdays this year. So we will kick off with Swingadelic, and then we'll have the great Bucky Pizzarelli with his guitar summit and a salute to Les Paul and Frank Sinatra. And then we bring in a young trumpet player, Bria Skonberg, who is one of the most exciting players in jazz today. We have a group called Roomful of Blues out of Boston, they were formed in the 60s, and they have been one of the most exciting blues bands in the, in the country for more than 40 years. We have the Blues Hall of Famer, Charlie Musselwhite, one of the greatest harmonica players to come out of Chicago. Uh, he's a legend in the field, and he will culminate a great day of music for the people of the whole region. We bring people from as far south as Philadelphia and South Jersey, from New York City, uh, from upstate New York. They come now, last year we had 6,000 people here on the green. It's an exciting time. You've spent your entire career in the arts. Why are arts so important for communities? Well, it, it's the arts that provide a vibrancy to a community. And I always say that it's an economic engine that drives so many communities. When you take a look at what has happened here in Morristown, in 1994, when my, my wife Linda and I opened the doors to the community theater, this town was economically suffering. It was, there were a lot of vacant buildings. Uh, there was not the vibrancy. This was not the destination that it has become today. But thanks to the community theater, which is now known as MPAC, uh, it has become a center for young people and all people to come, not only to for living, but for uh, shopping and for just enjoying what a community has to offer. Another good example, of course, is Newark. Without NJ Pack, Newark would never have experienced the revitalization that it has. And we're seeing it now in Asbury Park with the Paramount Theater uh, and the revival along the boardwalk in Asbury Park. It's the arts that have made all the difference. New Brunswick is another example with the State Theater and the Crossroads Theater. That was the focal point of what helped New Brunswick rebuild. 
I always tell people, take a look at what happened in New York City in the late 1950s, long before you were born, Gary. The late 1950s with the emergence of Lincoln Center, the Upper West Side was a vast wasteland. Nobody wanted to live there. Now, you can't afford to, to rent an apartment on the Upper West Side thanks to Lincoln Center. So it's the arts that really make, it's the heartbeat of a community. It really what makes a community so vibrant and so exciting and a great place to be. I know you're working on a project for Les Paul's 100th birthday. Tell me about that. Well, this is, we're really excited about this. This is a, going to be uh, a concert celebrating Les Paul's 100th birthday. Les was really a New Jerseyan at heart. I know he was born in Indiana, but he lived here most of his life and he was both an inventor and a great musician. He was the inventor of the solid body guitar for Gibson. He was the inventor of multi-track recording, of the reverb, and he was a great musician and a great singer and songwriter and instrumentalist. Uh, what's so exciting about this is that we're doing this to help the Mawa Museum, which has the only full-time exhibit of Les Paul artifacts on the East Coast. They're not only trying to strengthen and build the exhibit that they have for Les Paul, but they're also strengthening the archive system that they have so that future generations can study the works of Les Paul, can study his notes for his inventions, can study his music. Uh, and we're planning a blockbuster concert. It's a once in a lifetime thing, and this is, we're making the most of it for the Mawa Museum and the Les Paul exhibit. Well, Don, you mentioned it. You were the founding executive director of the New Jersey Hall of Fame. What was that experience like, and why does New Jersey even need a Hall of Fame? Well, it was a remarkable experience, and New Jersey needs a Hall of Fame because this is an opportunity to celebrate the great people who have called New Jersey home, whether they were born here or whether they emigrated here, like Thomas Edison, who wasn't born here, but he certainly did all of his amazing inventions here in New Jersey. New Jersey is a fertile ground for great creative people. Nestled between Philadelphia and New York, this was the place to be. And when you take a look at the New Jersey Hall of Fame website, njhalloffame.org, you can see that almost 100 New Jerseyans have already been inducted into the Hall of Fame. So I was very fortunate to be one of the founders and the first executive director of such an amazing place because this celebrates all that is New Jersey. And I know your show, This is Jersey, is so important to the state. So is the New Jersey Hall of Fame. So it's been a real pleasure to be part of it. Don, thank you so much for being here. And good luck with all that you do in the arts. Thank you. And thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time.